I'm Matthew Ward. I'm the Executive Director for the High Plains Library District, and we would like um, to invite you all to participate in our planning for our new Library and Innovation Center. As we do this, uh, due to COVID-19, really kind of restricted in a lot of the public meetings that we have. So what we're really trying to do is provide some more information to inform your decisions and your input in regards to this public survey we have available. That survey is available at mylibrary.us. Uh, so again, that's mylibrary.us. And we would just like to encourage everyone um, within the district to participate and give us feedback. Really, this project is going to be a, a joint uh, project for a library, an innovation center, and then a part children's museum as well. So it's really kind of outside the scope of what a lot of libraries are today. And we would really love to, to make sure that this vision really happens, that we are able to achieve what the community wants and needs. Um, and that's not just from my perspective, but from the whole library districts. So we really need your input on this, and we would ask you to, to please give us feedback and input so we can uh, really make the best project that we can. And in doing that, we've partnered with our architecture firm. It's Barker, Ranker, Seacat Architecture, and they're fully on board with this idea and really would love to get as much input as we can from you as well. So with that, uh, I've got with me today Andy and Daniel from BRS, and uh, they're going to actually take it from here. So at uh, BRS, um, we focus uh, highly on community projects in general, um, one of them obviously being uh, libraries. Um, but in that in that vein, we use a people-inspired design process to get the best results. And that doesn't just mean the people in this room, but that means all of the communities that we work with. So again, we're, we're, we really are interested in uh, your opinions. So uh, please help. Um, the first thing we wanted to do is really dive into some similar projects to sort of get your mind thinking about uh, what's out there and, and um, how you can use the spaces. Um, so the first, so the first, uh, the first uh, facility that we'll look at is the uh, Durango Public Library. And uh, what you see is sort of a, a variety of spaces here. Um, one of the sort of most interesting things about this library is sort of the back porch on the left uh, and its ability to not just be a place where people go out and sit, but you can actually program it and have a great view of um, the river and the train uh, moving by, as you saw in the previous picture. Um, some of the fun things about this library are um, on the bottom right, um, an ode to the old card catalogs and a little bit of the history shown uh, throughout the library. Um, and the next example um, is one of yours, which is uh, Hudson. And um, if you haven't experienced this library before, um, maybe uh, on the bottom right there, there there's a uh, wet arts and crafts room within the children's area. Uh, small furniture specifically programmed um, with children's activities. Um, and in the bottom middle, uh, right as you enter the building, um, is their multi-purpose room uh, that serves uh, for a multitude of functions from instruction uh, all the way down to um, public events. I uh, wanted to give you a little outlook on the schedule. Um, the, the, the design, the schedule of this building or the, the design schedule really takes uh, four main steps. Uh, the first step here is where we're at, we're in program verification. And what we're looking for from uh, that phase is to really figure out how we want to use these spaces. Uh, and then moving forward through the remainder, the other three is where we're really start designing the building, um, figuring out how the mechanical electrical plumbing and structural systems work and ending up uh, getting uh, a permit so that we can start construction. Uh, from the sort of public input side or community input side, uh, we're right here in this first uh, programming meeting where again, we're asking you uh, for input on how you want to use the spaces. Uh, there'll be two more following this where we'll be uh, giving you more information about the project uh, come uh, before the end of the year. And uh, as we go through these programmatic components, um, again, we're really looking for your input on, on how you may use spaces. 
Yeah, we're, we're really excited to offer this to the community. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get your voices heard on what you want, what you want to see, and how you want to use this library. So we've um, instituted a survey, which you can find on mylibrary.us. And what we're going to do now is run through questions two through six, uh, which talk about the various uh, spaces that will be included that could be included in your library and we just want to run through them so that you can start to establish priorities what's most important to you what you want to see what you need to have so question two uh, revolves around traditional library spaces we ask that you only choose three of the spaces and i'll run through what these spaces are the, the First picture on your left is a group reading room. This is a larger room that's attached to the library. It's not enclosed. It has the books and bookshelves next to them. Uh, there's a series of uh, different seating arrangements from comfortable chairs to tables and chairs for working, studying, reading. It's not as quiet as, as uh, a uh, enclosed space, but it, it's not loud. Uh, the middle picture is a traditional quiet reading room. The difference between this room and the next or the previous is that it is enclosed. So it is designated a quiet space for reading, studying, uh, or um, researching. The third space is a cafe style reading room. This would be something you would see, think about a traditional uh, coffee shop where there is a variety of spaces uh, for gathering, for reading, for studying. Uh, might be tables and booths and comfortable chairs, and it's a little bit louder space. Picture on the left is an individual reading room slash study room. This would be a small enclosed room that is private, that is quiet, where you could read, study, have a conversation, make a phone call. The middle space is a large social gathering space. This might be part of the lobby. Uh, the picture shows a large open space where people can gather for uh, in small groups at tables, or maybe there is a, a series of uh, bench seating for uh, large groups to gather, possibly before they go to a banquet or after the banquet, a banquet a place to spill out to. The third picture is a fireplace lounge. It's exactly as it, it shows. It's a fireplace uh, space with a fireplace, a place for you to sit and enjoy the ambience of that fireplace and read a book. Picture on the left is an art display space. This space may feature uh, community artwork or artwork that is created in the innovation space. The innovation space may have an artist in residency that they can display their work here. Uh, the middle space is a traditional teen tween space for ages 10 to 17, a space that they can call their own. And then finally on the right is a traditional children's space, a space that is geared for the little ones that has a story time reading space, uh, space for active play, and comfy seats for kids to read. Uh, question number three is geared towards a teen space. We'd only like you to choose one of these spaces that's most important to you, as there's only four choices. Um, all of these questions do have a spot for you to write in your own ideas. Uh, there is no wrong answer. We want to hear anything you want to see in this space. So the four spaces, we have a video gaming area. We have small study rooms where small groups can meet, uh, could be used as a tutoring space. Then we have larger group study areas, places that, a space that may have a bunch of computers, uh, might be used for after school programs. And then finally, we want to know if this space needs to be physically separated, uh, a place that teens can call their own and they can keep the noise contained. Question number four is regarding community spaces. These first three images uh, all have to do with this notion of co-working space. Uh, co-working, as more people will work from home, they need a space to set up similar to a coffee shop or something else that is free. Um, the library is an opportunity to do that. They, we have small group collaboration spaces, so spaces that are a little bit bigger than a study room, 
where small groups can get together. Then we have larger collaboration spaces. These spaces would be outfitted with technology and whiteboards and smart boards or some sort of equipment that can be used for groups to brainstorm, to have meetings. And then finally, an open workspace, a space that's larger, that has a variety of seating options, tables with power to plug in your laptop, maybe booths for small groups, a little bit louder space where lots of things are happening in the open. Picture on the left is a traditional classroom. Classroom spaces can be used for a variety of functions. Middle space would be a lecture space that has seating only, uh, no room for tables, but a spot for speakers or presentations. And the space on the right is an event space. This is a larger space that could be used to house uh, banquets or uh, job fairs or speakers. Question number five is regarding innovation space. Again, we'd like you to choose only three spaces that are most important to you. And please, please, please feel free to write in any other ideas. This is a, a category that is, um, there is no wrong answer. So some of the ideas we've generated is a music video podcast production space, science and technology lab space, a space for robotics, mechanics, electronics, uh, this picture on the right is an arts and crafts space. We have a photography studio option, a culinary arts, which is the teaching kitchen. So a space that you can come learn about nutrition, learn recipes, learn about cooking diverse foods. Picture on the right is a wood shop or a metal shop. Picture on the left is a multi-purpose flex space, a little bit larger space. Maybe it's two to three classrooms that can be combined to have a little bit larger groups gathering here. And then on the right is a, a job training space, a vocational training space that we hope to partner with community business leaders to um, engage in this space and do some training and some knowledge transfer. Picture on the left is a children's museum interactive learning space, a space for kids to come to learn, to be inspired, to engage, and then finally on the right is an art display slash marketplace. The idea behind this is the innovation uh, space may have a, a lot of things where you're making things, uh, creating things, and this would be an opportunity to display those things and possibly sell those goods. Uh, question six is regarding outdoor space. Again, we'd like you to please only choose three spaces. Uh, we uh, the picture on the left is outdoor seating, a place for you to gather and read your book outside. Middle picture is an open plaza. This is kind of an open-ended, flexible space that you could have events, demonstrations. Um, picture on the right is a covered patio, a uh, space that, uh, that is shaded for you to read, to gather, to be social. Picture on the left is a special event or special feature space. So a screened-in porch, an outdoor fireplace, um, something that's specific to outdoors. Middle space is a yard game area, a place to be social at the library outside. And the picture on the right is a food truck area, so a place to house food trucks for special events. Picture on the left is a passive park. The idea here, this is uh, would be a park space without play features, so think paths, places to read, lots of landscaping place to enjoy the outdoors. Picture on the right is a quiet reflective space, a space for you to sit in nature and read. Uh, it's an extension of the library outside. Picture on the left would be an informal outdoor classroom, so trying to organize some spaces outside for small groups to gather. Maybe there's a class or a tutoring that's happening outside. And finally on the right is a picture of a story walk. A story walk is uh, an outdoor space that has stations where a book is divided, kids move from one spot to the next, enjoying and engaging with the outdoors while also experiencing the library and the children reading. We then have a few demographic questions, just understanding who's, who's taking the survey. And then finally, the survey concludes with what makes your community unique. This is a very important 
part of this process. We want to build a library and design a library that is unique to your community, to the High Plains Library District. We want it to be a space that means something to you. So we have three questions that kind of dive into this. First question would be, how do you describe where you live to visitors? What, what is unique that you tell people about, about where you live? Second question, what places or events must visitors experience when they're here? So again, what's important that you show off in your community? And three, what excites you most about where you live? This can be anything. It could be the, the people, it could be the community, it could be the landscape. Um, it, it's really what is, is most important to you about where you live. So on next steps, um, again, just wanted to uh, remind you, please uh, head over to mylibrary.us to take the survey. Um, and you'll have two more opportunities to hear from us um, for updates as we move forward. All right, uh, it's Matt again, and I just wanted to thank everyone um, for giving us the time to talk through the survey and provide more examples. Um, hopefully it helps to inspire and give you some more, more thoughts and ideas that will help to, to provide the direction for the district and help to mold that future for us. Really, I think for myself, for the library, and of course for um, our architects as well, it's important that we get information and input from everyone across the district. It's not just a one community project. This is something that we, we see being able to be replicated and expanded throughout the entire district. So we really want to hear from everyone. And we just want to thank you now for taking the time. And of course, thanking you. We thank you as well for taking that survey and giving us um, that information we need to build the best project that we can. So thank you. And we look forward to being able to open this this up and having hosting everyone and uh, really redefining what a library is. Thanks again.